Welcome to The Art of Placemaking. I'm Patrick Ahern, and I'm sitting with Mark London of the Martha's Vineyard Commission. Welcome, Mark. And we're going to be talking about uh, the built environment and how it may impact uh, island life in the future. And Mark, why don't you give us a little background uh, about yourself and, and how you came to the vineyard and, and what you see some of the things that we'll be talking about. Well, I was born and bred in Montreal, lived there uh, pretty well all my life until I moved here five years ago. Um, I am an architect and planner. We, uh, when I married uh, my, my wife from Pittsburgh, and we got out the um, um, current map of uh, North America and tried to figure out where was the closest spot to Montreal uh, that had uh, water, ocean water, that you could e swim in without a wetsuit. <laughs> so that was the south coast of Cape Cod and then we saw Martha's Vineyard and we said, oh, we heard that that's a really nice place and been coming here for uh, ever since. We came for 25 years as summer visitors for first for two weeks and then for a month. This thing opened up and here you are. Here I am. Well, great. Well, it's, it's, it's terrific that you're here and uh, as an architect myself, it's nice to have someone on the commission that has some of the training and background that, uh, that I think is important uh, for your position on the island as well. One of the things we wanted to talk about today was um, the island in general, about uh, how you see it and how you see the role of the commission and um, particularly the built environment and how that can improve the quality of life in the island and also what what's different in each of the towns and how you would approach it. Uh, for example, what you might see or envision seeing in the, the growth or uh, renovations or improvements in Egertown, you might not see happening in Oak Bluffs and, and Vineyard Haven and Vineyard Haven uh, waterfront. I think there's some great opportunities there. And certainly uh, Up Island has a whole different character and feel and um, what are some of the thoughts that you might have on, on that? Well, it struck me while I was a summer visitor and even more strongly when I moved here that um, clearly we have a very exceptional natural environment. And uh, we focus a lot on the natural environment. There are all kinds of organizations that promote it and are buying land to preserve it and um, lobbying, advocating in favor of its preservation. And uh, considering how extraordinary the built environment of Martha's Vineyard is, I was struck that there wasn't, I, I, I felt that the, the concern community, it, it isn't as much on, on, on the public venue as it is in terms of the natural environment. But now, um, people, uh, planners, architects, uh, um, citizens are, are very much rediscovering the values of a century ago where you have people living um, more closely together in compact mixed use, pedestrian friendly areas, whether you like the term smart growth or not. And that's really what we had. Well, I think one of the things that, uh, that is so unique about Martha's Vineyard as compared to Nantucket, where the architecture tends to be very homogeneous. Um, when you fly over and you look and you say, well, every house that's there or being built all looks the same. Here on Martha's Vineyard, we have distinct separate towns that have different images and, and different attitudes that uh, I think are very special and very unique to find on an island environment. What you see in Egertown in terms of uh, federal colonials and Greek revivals and, and things like that um, is very different than, than what you'd see in uh, Oak Bluffs. Some people react negatively to what Nantucket did because they started with just the town and then they extended to that the whole island is an historic district and so there's design review and the whole thing and they are, are ensuring that new buildings fit into what is distinctive about, about Nantucket. Maybe they went too far, but on the other hand, it does create a place where you, it really is distinctive. You go to Nantucket, even a new area, and it doesn't look like a suburb from New Jersey Correct. or from California. And uh, I, you know, on ba I'm not sure it's so terrible. Right. Uh, well, I, it's I, not. I agree. It's not necessarily. Uh, Martha's Vineyard is a very different situation because in Nantucket they had one town and had a very distinctive architecture, and so they maintained that style. Here we've got a lot of variety. There is not one character. There would be a very varied approach. In most cases, you wouldn't care about the color, or you might not care about the color. But in Edgartown, you might not want pink buildings, and in 
in uh, oh, the well, house. You might, you might not, you might not want white buildings. I don't know. Right. Um, it's rare that actually places go as far as controlling character, but it worries me a bit that there are a lot of very significant buildings that have been just in the five years since I moved here that have been demolished or are on the verge of being demolished. Um, that there is no, um, we've got small historic districts that are the very, very hearts of, um, of, of the towns. Um, most people, I think, would be surprised to know that um, large areas of what they would consider historic Edgartown really have no protection whatsoever. If somebody walks in tomorrow and asks for a demolition permit to put in a new building that meets zoning regulations and that is totally inappropriate for the neighborhood, there, uh, there, there really is nothing that could be done. Likewise, in Oak Bluffs, I mean, uh, you have the you know, Circuit Ave and the Commercial District, which has got lots of opportunities for uh, not only what the architecture might look like, but also how the buildings are used. You know, we chatted briefly about you know, the vertical hierarchy of buildings, where you, you have retail on the first floor, residential or offices on the second floor, and if there's a third floor, it could be uh, you know, residential as well. And recognizing that, I think, as us baby boomers get older and people want to spend more time here, which I've seen, I've been here 20 years, and I've seen, particularly in the, in the last you know, five to 10 years, uh, people spending more and more time here. The season, as they say, is getting longer and longer. But there's, a, there's an analogy maybe between, I don't know, maybe I'm projecting here, but in the 60s, when I was in School of Architecture, everybody thought that the, the, the architecture was going to be totally transformed. The world was going to completely change with new technology. We were going to no longer live in traditional houses. We were going to live in these modern plastic machines with, with technology all over the place and huge. And, and um, it isn't really like that. Look at what, what, how, how we've integrated technology into our houses. And you've got a, maybe a, a laptop computer that's that big and that lets you communicate with the entire world. And that has let people live in a, in, expand their opportunities in, in, enormously and still live in the kind of environment they want to live in. Well, I, I think for Martha's Vineyard, we might be doing some of the same thing. We might be allowing technology to let certain people live here that help support the kinds of things that we value. We don't want to import new people necessarily and displace year-round residents with sort of uh, um, fancy consultants moving in here from California. We want to bring our, our children back. Uh, uh, we want to be able to stay here ourselves. Exactly, yeah. exactly.